Harmonic distortion, what is it and how can it help my mixing and recording or mastering? First of all, distortion. Distortion is that when processing changes the waveform of the signal. These are nonlinear changes to a waveform's amplitude. In Wikipedia, it says this about distortion. The effects, meaning distortion, alter the instrument's sound by clipping the signal, pushing it past its maximum, which shears off the peaks and troughs of the signal waves, adding sustain and harmonic and inharmonic overtones and leading to a compressed sound that is often described as warm and dirty, depending on the type and intensity of distortion used. Now, there's basically two types of distortion. There's soft clipping, which is the most subtle and the most preferred. Then there's hard clipping, which is similar to digital distortion or brick wall limiting. This is when the troughs and the peaks get completely chopped off and flattened. When is distortion bad? Well, quite simply, when you don't like it. With a test tone generator, I'm going to set a sine wave to 100 hertz. Here we see that it's a nice and pretty and very symmetric sine wave. But when I introduce distortion, we can see that the peaks and troughs are getting flattened and the harmonic intervals are being added. Here we can see 300 hertz, 500 hertz, 700 hertz, 900 hertz. And these are known of as odd multiples. There's even an odd multiples which simply sound different. For example, if we have here 100 hertz, now if I double that to 200 hertz and turn down the distortion, we'll have an octave. If we double that, we will have 400 hertz. Double that. And it goes on and on and on. These are known of as even multiples. Let's go back to 100 hertz. Well, here we have our 100 hertz sine wave. As I said, if I increase the distortion, we get these odd multiples of harmonic distortion, which can quite simply make the sound thicker, warmer, more in your face, and give variations of lovely artifacts that can really help the sound. So now, before I bore you and myself to death with all this scientific jargon, shall we put it to some real world tests? Okay, I'd like to show how distortion can affect the sound in a positive and negative way by using a couple of preamp simulators. I'd like to start here by using the Slate Digital FG73 and the FG76. The 73 is based on the Neve 1073 preamp and the FG76 is based on the Siemens V76 preamp. Okay, I've got a bass drum and it sounds basically like this. I can tell that there's been some processing. It's not just a microphone in a drum hole. It's, uh, you know, been tampered with, but that's okay for our test purposes. I'd like to start here with the FG73, the 1073 clone, and look what the gain distortion here, we have a virtual drive here as well, what it does to our sound both sonically and visually. You see it just started becoming red. It's clipping. That shows when it starts clipping. Now, as you can hear, not only are the peaks and troughs cut off and there are no transients, they have been smeared away. You can also see here that the sine wave type of bass drum is turned into a flattened out distorted signal. So again, that's without. That's with. If I just slightly clip it and we turn it on and off, you can hear that the bottom end is getting a bit tighter and it's making the fundamental bass frequencies a bit more stable.
Of course, it always depends what you want. You can use this effect to get rid of annoying transiences. It is possible to have too many peaks or too harsh peaks in your drum sound. And that's something that makes it sound very digital and introducing a bit of distortion into the signal path will clean this up. Let's try the same thing using the FG76. The virtual drive here is increased by steps. All right, it starts clipping right about here. The difference is not so obvious. And if I push the gain all the way, we can hear it start to flatten out, as we can also see here. Again, I want to stress that this is not a guarantee that distortion will make things sound better. It's just a tool that can be used to control dynamics or make things sound warmer, fatter, harder, more defined. It can be put to many uses. Now I'd like to try doing the same thing using this plugin from UA Audio. It's basically the same thing as the FG73, which is basically a virtual clone of the 1073 preamp from Neve. This one is a little bit trickier because this one has a virtual drive and the output stays constant, which makes it much easier to show. And this one is more like the real world unit in that it gets louder when you turn it up. So let's start here at a very low setting. That's about the right level. Okay, so I'm gonna take it up a couple notches, turn it down. For me, on this preamp, I can hear the effects. They're, they're, they're a bit smoother. It actually sounds a little bit more dimensional, uh, a little bit deeper. Um, I uh, like the effects I'm getting out of this. However, with this one, I really like the fact that I can experiment with different levels of distortion without having to chase the um, trim control, the output control all the time. Let's try a little bit more. I'll compensate by sight. It's still quite loud in comparison, but let's go for gusto. I'm gonna crank this thing up a bit. Okay. Now we hear and see that it's getting flattened and the transients have been cut off. This kind of effect is often used in, in electric dance music or um, program music on sine wave bass drums because you can make this sustain effect that makes the bass drum seem to come out of the void and just be humongous. However, also in rock and metal, this is something that's missing a bit in production these days because this kind of effect we used to get out of the console while recording or while mixing, and now it's um, something you've got to remember to put in later. Okay, I'm going to try once really cranking this up. Uh, it's going to get loud, I think. Yes, indeed we can hear that it's basically destroyed. That was our bass drum, and now it's destroyed. That one's really just falling to bits now. Okay, I just wanted to show that to give an idea of what other devices do. Now we have this channel strip here from Brainworks Audio. It's a virtual 4000 SSL channel strip. And what's special about this one is that it has this total harmonic distortion control built into the path that also makes a very lovely effect. Again, here we have our bass drum. And when I introduce, it really takes a while. The difference is very subtle. But it's definitely there. 
In the past, when working on a real console, I would get this effect simply by manipulating the gain of the console, or by pushing the VCA bus, or even just putting the signal through any kind of analog device that would give me the harmonic distortion wanted to enhance the sound. Another plugin that we have here at Holfa, developed by Holfa, is this Saturator plugin, which I am a huge fan of for many reasons. First of all, you have different types of distortions, the germanium, preamp type, thermonic, triode, and tape, not to mention the 1950s style. What's wonderful about this is when you choose the different types, you can see basically what kind of intervals of harmonics you're going to get from these, uh, these sounds. Now, I like the 1950s very much, and I like what it does to the sound. We'll start again nice and simple. Start introducing some... And this is also very similar to the 1073 type of distortion. The tape is also very interesting. It really adds sustain to the bottom end and makes it poke out a little bit. That's um, sometimes much easier than EQing. And that concludes part one of what has now become a two-part tutorial. Uh, originally, I wanted to make a single video, but I can't seem to scale it down to fit. So in part two, I'll be discussing how we can use harmonic distortion on, for example, a snare drum or effects or even a, a bass guitar in a nice ballad mix. And so be sure to check us out at hofa-college.com. Until next time, take care. Have a great mix.